Works now. Alright. Okay. I have no idea why it wasn't working before. Okay. Alright. Da -da 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 -da. Alright. Right home. I'm here. How's that, guys? He might be. On my thing, it looks like he's really loud now, but I'm sure he works. It should work now. I have no idea what happened, but the classic um, um, fix turn it, back, turn it off, turn it right back on again. Yeah, it works. So, sorry about that. Um, good thing. Um, the classic. Um... That was weird. Hello? Alright, anyway, so yeah. Oh, Ryan the uh, Hero? Ryan the Hero? Thanks, Ryan Hero, for the follow. You rock? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, let's see. Glad we fixed that issue. Yes, loud and clear. Cool. Awesome. Glad it's all loud and clear. Alright, so yeah. Um, yeah. So, for. Uh, I will try this. Uh, I think I've had an Irish mule. I think I have. Now that I think about it. I'm gonna look it up real quick, um, but Brave Bull, uh, what up? Uh, you have any other drinks you want to wrap up real quick with this concept? Uh, not really. Just uh, like I said, straight tequila is the best way to go if you just want to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, I've had an Irish Mule before, I've, or something like I had the vodka mule, and I've had an Irish Mule. They are really, really good. I like those type of drinks. Um, but when it comes down to it at the end of the day, if I could have one drink, one last drink, like the earth was going down and a ball of firing rock, the bar was stocked, it had anything I wanted, and I could ask for one freaking drink from that, I'd ask for an ice house. A freezing cold ice house beer. I will want to watch the world burn to an ice house. Because it will be as bad as it always is. Won't change. Nothing will be but it won't be better. It won't be but it'll just be what it is and I can watch the world go out. So yeah. I know. Shocking, right? Shocking. It's an ice house beer. For all the awesome whiskeys I drink, that's what I want to go out at. So let's go into this alcohol talk. Uh, I'm gonna go to a blog post. Uh, he's a friend of the show of We Are Liber Liber Libertarian Indiepolitics dot uh, org. It's Abdul Hakim Shabazz's website. He does a very good, but a very good uh, job of concentrating and focusing on Indiana and showing us basically how we act stupid. And it's pretty cool to watch this guy from Illinois come over here and kind of show the. It is, you know, just basically show Indiana to itself. Just a big mirror. It's awesome. I love the site. So, yeah, if he was still trying to do it in Illinois, he would be way too busy and could never or function. So, or, yeah, or shot, or shot. Let's get it straight. Let's, let's, they would have, they would have disbarred him or did something so he would stop. Okay. All right. So, Senate panel throws out cold uh, uh, water on expanding cold beer sales. So, like I said, now we can buy cold beer here in Indiana. But you can only buy cold beer from a liquor store. If you're a grocery store, you have to sell room temperature beer. Our beer is regulated like that. And if you want to sell hard liquor and you're on a liquor store, you have to have a pharmacy. So that's why there's lots of... F so if you ever visit Indiana and you want to know why in the heck there's pharmacies every, fr <laughs> every freaking fee, why does every store go to these pharmacy? Because they need it to sell liquor. So... Helps out if you have to do medications. You know, you, you can go anywhere and get medication. Uh, no drive-through liquor stores either. I don't. Yeah, I don't think any. I don't think we're allowed to have a drive-through liquor store. I think that you just get that in Ohio. You can get that in Tennessee too. Driving down to Florida, you stop in Tennessee and you can get drive-through liquor and buy fireworks all in the same exit and just uh, go have a good time. It's crazy. That's crazy. But like the other thing, like here in Indiana, I could dr I could go to Edwards Drive in, not leave my car, get a massive tenderloin, right? <laughs> oh, Edwards is my place, man. I grew up there. My oh, favorite. Yeah, that's the place there. That's a that place will like make me any diet I'm on, I quit. It's it's it's, it's the weakness. If I smell it, it's it's okay now that I'm not close to it. And I don't have to see it every day. It's easy. But if you drive by it, it's like I gotta stop. That mug and bun. Oh man, mug and bun. Oh man, I remember what. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of this because I'll just tell you the story how it went from 135 pounds to 180 pounds very quickly because of mug and bun. All right, so um, Indiana lawmakers so like 
So, a measure that would be expanded cold beer sales in Indiana was defeated by 9-1 to by a Senate panel, but proponents say they'll be back next year. The Senate policy, uh, Public Policy Committee turned down a measure that would allow convenience and grocery stores the opportunity to sell cold beer. Currently, only liquor stores can sell cold beer. Like I said, proponents like Jay Ricker of Ricker's Convenience Store says it was giving consumers choice. However, opponents cited public safety and dangers of alcohol. You can hear uh, Ricker in the Leon Taylor uh, in his re Leon Taylor audio above, and he ru it runs for not, not nine minutes. Um, if you guys want, we can listen to it, but um, I've listened to it. It's it's really great audio. I say go to any uh, here. I'll drop into the chat if you guys want to go to it. I can play. Should I? I'm always like wondering if I should play it or not. I, okay, I'll play. I'll play the nine-minute clip real quick. Taken hey guys, it's Abdul for the good folks over at Leon Taylor in 809 North Delaware, downtown Indianapolis. Now, I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions because why put off and do next year what you can do now? So make your New Year's resolution today and get over to Leon Taylor and update that wardrobe. That's right, that coach you got, you probably realize it's not keeping as warm as it should be, or maybe that suit's got some tear around the edges, those skirts and blouses just aren't doing it for you anymore. Well, Larry Norm Kim and Judy got a wide selection of both ready made and tailor made stuff for your picking. So, like I said, make your New Year's resolution today, make it Leon Taylor. 809 North Delaware in downtown Indianapolis. All right. All right, Jay Ricker, uh, 8 to 1, Senate Policy Committee uh, turns. Jay Ricker's of Ricker's gas station, the gas station in, um, in Indiana. What they did was they didn't find a loophole. They basically worked in the way of the law to be able to give them access to be able to sell, sell cold beer there because of the way the law worked, you had to have, uh, what was it, dine in sales? You so many chairs. Do you remember, Randall? I do not. Yeah, it That's, was. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar. Yeah, it was. You have to have so many. You have to have like dining service for food to be able to sell cold. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, to sell right. cold beer. Yep. Several different places have done this. It's, uh, which people will call like this is a loophole. Like, but no, they're just compl you know, they're just going with the way the law says, and it just so happens that they're also a convenience store, and people are upset about it. But, um, the Rickers gas station wasn't. Hmm? Wasn't there a restaurant that had a menu that was basically you could buy a hot dog? Yes. On yes. Sunday, that was their only menu, and yes. then you could buy beer along yeah. with. It. There's several different bars actually in Indiana like that. I've been to several that had the uh, thirty dollar hot pocket. Yeah. And they didn't really want to sell the hot dog, so they charged like what ten dollars mm -hmm. for the hot dog or something. Yeah, ridiculous <laughs> amount for it. Or like Triton, they're like, oh, we make pretzels, but and they just allow food, food trucks to go there. But they finally got their kitchen started. And they were supposed to get started in June, but yeah, it's like just to sell beer and stuff like that. They you you have to offer food. You have to have food. You can't just do the booze. It's crazy. Well, I find it ironic that the people who are who are arguing for the for the exemption because of you know mm -hmm. saying that it's a, it's a danger to the to the people to have cold beer on Sunday is okay for the rest of the week, and it's okay for their interests to sell it on Sunday. It's just not good enough for convenience stores to do it on Sunday. What's different about Sunday than the rest of the week? Right. That makes no sense. Right, exactly. And uh, yeah, the bars in New... Thank you, uh, Toe Burtis in the chat. Like, yeah, New New Albany, and they have menus to other, like, their local businesses around because they'd rather... They want to do booze because that's what their business is. It's basically they're trying to force someone into a business that that's not what they're doing. That's not what they want to do. So well, it's and, unintended and it, consequences too of every single law like this. They think they're going to stop it. They're not going to stop it. They're just going to create loopholes that people are going to work around because it's what people want. It's what the the society wants to have. So they should be not trying to fight against what the society wants. In my opinion, correct. Yeah, that's also like like uh, like I think one of the reasons why Indiana's microbrewery. Uh, like industries flourish so much because you can, they're open on Sundays. You can go there and pick up beer on Sundays. Granted, it's a lot of time. It's slightly more expensive than like Bud Light or whatever, like the regular American beers. But it's I can get this on Sunday, you know. And I do like it, and I do enjoy it, and I partake into it. But you know, I really do enjoy getting cold beer on Sunday from the brewery. It's it's nice. I love doing it. So. You know, so like that's also like a consequence of the market. It's like, you know, is is the you know you start thinking like is the main reason we've got all these micro breweries is because of this. It's just the same way like um, out in uh, New Hampshire, they've got those rules for the nano breweries, smaller than our micro breweries, so they just skirt the different liquor laws out there. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and play. 
Zound cold beer sales, expanded convenience stores, liquor stores. First of all, your reaction? Well, you know, I was heartened when we started off because they've never had a hearing on cold beer before in the history of this committee. You know, what's perplexing to me is that as I went around and talked to all the members of public policy, they normally debate amendments. You don't have just one big bill. You've got all kinds of ancillary, and this one had all kinds of things, but they weren't allowed to have any amendments. Did that make a difference? And at least one senator suggested that. Oh, it no, it made a difference in uh, probably about four of them because they, they said to me, they go, well, why are we having amendments? And I go, well, I'm not, I'm not in charge of that. I said, you need to ask. And I would pose that as a question that you need to ask why they wouldn't have any amendments. They want to have a clean bill. To me, a clean bill in the past, in my limited uh, knowledge of what's going on, is one where they didn't want a Christmas tree of a whole bunch of things. And that's not what we were talking talking about here. In fact, if you heard my testimony, you know, I think we needed to have 21. I think we needed to have training. I think they needed to do away with uh, uh, items that they couldn't sell at convenience stores. We talked about having a fund they could use either for the ATC or for uh, soft landing on mom and pops. That's not my decision, but the pool of money's there. It doesn't come out of tax monies. It's coming out of our hide uh, on that. So, uh, but they wouldn't allow any of those amendments, but I had, I had um, senator after senator ask me about that, and I said, that's not in my purview. Jay, for you, what's next in this fight? Well, we're not going to give up. Uh, there's actually a couple bills over in the House. You know, uh, as Senator Gard, I think she was quoted as saying we're going to get one this year, and she thinks in the, the other one we should look at down the road. And so we're going to be back. We're not going to give up on this. You know, it's one of the things that I've talked about. We have better things to talk about than cold beer. I mean, yes, it makes a difference to me, but we need to go on to the things that are more important. Jay, one of the things that has popped up that I heard a lot of people say, particularly the opposition, is if you were to allow cold beer sales at uh, grocery stores and convenience stores, you literally open up you know, thousands of new avenues for alcohol consumption, and some folks just weren't quite comfortable with so many places being able to sell alcohol and what they would consider expanded cold beer sales. How do you? What's your reaction to that, that argument that was brought up today? Well, you know, I talked about that in my testimony, and I bring it up every time, and some people conveniently seem to ignore what I'm saying. There's a quota system on, on licenses here. You cannot get a license in a whole lot of places. The reason I got a restaurant permit in two different locations was there's no grocery permit available. So the only difference that's going to be in the vast, vast majority of the state is you're going to be able to sell the same product you've been selling cold instead of warm. You're still selling the same thing. You know, in my mind, you don't really need a whole lot more people to, po to police it because it's the same thing right there. You know, there, you, you can't go out and get a license. I don't have licenses at all my stores because they're not available. So I think that is uh, a argument that doesn't really hold a lot of water. Yeah, the, uh, the argument about the whole licensing thing too is because like the the market doesn't also set like oh, how many liquor stores do you have? How many things that can serve booze like that? It's that pool that everyone has to pull from and that's why every time you like a, a bar will get into trouble or something like that they'll instantly just pull up shop, sell their inventory, and then end up selling their license. I've seen a lot of different bars that I loved was, like, the owner was, like, he's waiting for it to go down and die because he was just trying to sell his liquor license be, uh, for his for the establishment because he was done, he was retired for it, even though the bar had some people in it, we loved it, but, you know, he wanted to sell. I get it. Nine to one is a pretty resounding vote. Is that too big of a hurdle to overcome this session? You know, I, I ask her, uh, I ask people that that are advising us, and since I know, since I've met with every one of those no votes and, and knew what their problems were with the bill, it almost always was something that could have been taken care of, not in all cases, but in many cases, an amendment. What does this mean for your stores right now? And because I know this was like the timeline coming up that will expire your licenses to excel cold beer. Are you going to try to maybe get the law amended so you folks can be grandfathered in, or have you figured out that far down the road yet? I haven't really thought about that. It's only two stores, and then the other two that have restaurant permits. But, you know, uh, I don't feel real comfortable about that if that's what we decide to do because they grandfathered every single other one out there except our two stores. So I have a feeling that's going to be kind of futile if that's 
that's where we decided to go. And I'm not saying that's where we're going to try and go. Yeah, that's the also BS thing is that they were so upset at the Rickers gas station like that. You could tell it was like that contempt of the Indiana Senate, you know, basically the, uh, you know, that they're going to make sure everyone else who's grandfathered in except them. That's why they're, they're, it really is like, you ticked us off, you pissed us, you know, you did what you, we told you not to do this, you found the way, and you did it anyway, so we're going to hurt everyone, uh, so we're going to let everyone else go, but not you. You're going to get screwed over still. It's awful. Awful. It's really, it's, they really are targeting a business, you know. I know you addressed this earlier, but for those of us who, who just came here, could you talk about the process that unfolded? I, I heard you mentioned something about amendments that weren't allowed to be heard in committee. Could you well, expand for, on that? First, I had good things to say, which was we've never had a hearing about Colbert ever in the history of this public policy. They've just never allowed it. So I really appreciate that. And we had a great discussion, and Senator Alting actually alluded to that today. What perplexed me was, and I'm not a legislative expert, is that there are usually amendments uh, when you just have one thing, like it's just Cindy Sales or it's just cold beer. There are amendments because there's some issues, and that's where it's debated uh, in that committee. So, th Thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have people on this committee who are used to debating if there's going to be an amendment or not be an amendment. They weren't allowed to do that this time. And we had a number of the people that I talked to a couple of times who said, you know, I could get comfortable with this, I believe, but it needs an amendment to make me comfortable. And the things that they wanted to amend are a whole lot of the things that I talked about, which was 21-year-old uh, clerks, training, do away with the products they can't sell. I mean, those are the kind of things that I probably forgot one or two. But I, and, and Senator Alting, when we met with him, was in total agreement on all the things that we thought should be added to it. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like it, it was. Um, he's not in there trying to throw like this massive, like uh, that radical libertarian message on this thing. Like anyone should be able to sell it. There should be fourteen-year-olds selling booze out there. He was like, nope, twenty-one-year-olds. I'm fine with that. Let's put some training on it. You know, some excise training. Which you know, most people selling booze. You know, it's the laws on it are very dangerous. So training with selling booze and how to one to make sure someone's not buying outside they're like uh, if they're under 21 or just make to understand like different how ID how to check for bad IDs how to make sure someone's not inebriated when they're buying alcohol because you can't buy alcohol in the state of Indiana if you're already under the influence of alcohol so the idea to get someone you know being super drunk and going on a beer run well you're not by law you're not supposed to you, you can't buy once you're inebriated that much so which well, the uh, hmm? the the liquors the people who sell the liquor are under uh, obligation if they do sell it to someone who's to, too inebriated and they get too drunk they become responsible. Correct. Well, the same way at the convenience stores, the convenience stores, bartenders, anyone who sells booze in Indiana, that's the same way. Because even if you're at a grocery store, you notice someone like that. And the thing is also, like, ex they also bring up, like, the excise statistic, but the main people who are busted for buying underage, for it gets busted through excise, that's us that most of the time, that is um, uh, liquor stores. The only thing that convenience stores get busted on all the time is when it comes to cigarettes. That's the only thing they get busted with the excise, with the, um, the, um, the, um, the ex excise statistics, because the uh, most of the time at convenience stores, most of the cashiers are 16 and 18 years old. So when a booze comes around, they have to go get a manager. And that manager walks over. So that's one guy. This is, this is the only job I've seen in their crew of time. He's there. He's got all these 16-year-olds in front of him. And he's just there. Hey, you're selling booze? And he comes over. And he, you know, he scans and looks at your ID for you. So you've got this one guy completely trying on how to do that. So it's going to be very, very hard to get, like, a, get under 21 booze out of there. So the best thing to and do the is same with cigarettes too. You can't. Mm -hmm. You have to be eighteen to sell it. So a lot of times when you have an underage got person at a, a checkout, you have to have someone come over and just pump in a code and walk away again. That's all they're doing. Right. Yeah. 
do it eventually. It took years to get Sunday sales in Indiana. Was it realistic to expect to get cold beer? No. On technically, theoretically, the second try. Yeah, that's one of those questions I don't think I want to answer. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, I think if there's anything that's come out of all this, and it certainly wasn't the reason we did it all, was we've had a good, healthy discussion. But there's one comment that I've made more than one time. You know who gets left out of this? Yeah, I'll get to, if, if I get to sell cold beer, it'll help my bottom line. But it's the consumers in Indiana. You know, and everybody seems to ignore them. All of you are consumers, you know, and depending on who spoke today in the opposition, sometimes they kind of said, well, you can't you, you can't let those people make the decision. And I'm talking about other speakers. I'm not talking about members of the committee. But doggone it, you know, the people in this state do have a say in things. They just aren't getting their say in this particular item. I One think more. I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. You already have presumably on-premises cold beer available for the restaurants. Why is it important to have carry out on top of that? Well, those two restaurant permits are the two that were just mentioned that are going to be taken away from us. So we won't have that. And it was only two locations that we had that. Why is it important to have cold beer? Because as I mentioned many times, I'm a bricks and mortar building. I don't want to go out of business. I want what my consumers want, and my consumers want cold beer because they're they're using a free ATM in our particular instance. They're getting gasoline. If they're a smoker, they're getting smokes. If they're getting food, they're getting food from us. They want one spot to stop. They don't want to go someplace else. And in particular, I've heard women in smaller communities that go, you know, I feel safe there. I can take my kids in with me. And if I want to get a six pack of beer to take home, I can. I don't have to worry about not having a place for my children where they're safe. I feel safe in your store. They're well lit. And not everywhere, but some places they just don't feel comfortable uh, buying an alcoholic beverage of the type that we're asking to sell. I also want to make perfect clear because it seems like it comes up every time we do not want to sell spirits I think somebody else in my in my industry said we don't want to sell spirits we're talking about beer we already sell can sell wine cold which kind of flies in the face of logic because it's got a much higher alcohol content than beer does so we'll be back next year absolutely if we don't get it done this year thank you everybody Oh, yeah, that is right. You can buy, you can get a cold bottle of uh, wine at the um, liquor store or cider. That's why you see, also, if you come to Indiana, they also have a lot of the Red's Apple Ale cider everywhere because you can get that cold. I uh, going Mad to, Dog 2020. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or the, which uh, my personal favorite one, Bud Light, was having, like, those uh, lo- those Rita drinks, Those when they have those out. I really love the cr- uh, the Cran one or the pomegranate ones. And you get your 44 thing out of ice, crack your big can, open it. Look, I've got cold beer, and I'm sitting at the freaking liquor store. At, not liquor store, but at the gas station. And that's another thing that I didn't even think about until right now. It's like, if I want to go get cold beer, like say I want a cold 30-pack of Ice House, where am I going to spend my $12? I have to go to a liquor store. If I have Gunther with me, what am I going to do, leave Gunther outside? Because I can't bring someone under 21 inside. You can in Boston. But I can't hear, which is crap. So I, you know, it's almost like why have Gunther? Where, you know, where am I gonna, where am I going to like uh, get my cold beer from? I can't. I've either got to go to a brewery, a brew house, which will allow me to bring a kid in, or buy it warm at the liquor store and bring it up. Y- yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, cause uh, you gotta gotta know where to buy. Okay, gotta gotta know where to buy your ice house <laughs> to get it for twelve dollars or thirty. Okay, all right. I'm guessing that they don't want it. I'm the only one that comes there and gets it because it usually has dust on it when I go pick it up. Um, I already like already can't go into the cigar shop. I usually sit out front of the window, and uh, <laughs> somebody comes out and goes, "Here you go. I know what you want." I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> it's fun times. Fun times. The only time I get along with Mustang drivers. Um, let's see here. Uh, also, we had some. I oh, crap. The chat moved on me when I was looking. Uh, Toe Boderus. Our us sent in the article from uh, uh, what was it the uh, from Reason. We were talking about that uh, the uh, brew house in New Alp and New Albany, New Newbany, New Albany, whatever you pronounce. Anyways, the Bank Street Brew House in New Albany, Indiana. And you like here on the screen as you can see, yeah, the our famous hot dog sandwich, ten dollars. <laughs> Chef Campbell was talking about. Chef Campbell's soup, ten dollars. Instant coffee, caffeinated, five. Comes black and also <laughs> black. 
<laughs> Eaten by powdered milk with or without water. Ooh, man. <laughs> Get that. No water powdered milk. <laughs> <laughs> craft soft drinks different different uh flavors market pricing mm-hmm. they don't even put the price on yeah yeah, yeah. So they don't want to sell that stuff they don't if you want to mm-hmm. buy that you know mm-hmm. they'll sell it but yep fine print of indiana state law in order to possess an indiana retail alcohol beverage sales permit bank street brew house must comply with a 67 year old state law that comp- uh, compels us to maintain a restaurant located on the premise do 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 so yeah yeah, old crappy. Go back to the go back to the go back to the uh, hot dog. I want to read something that was set, that was said under there. It was really fun. Oh, oh, it's your own image here. I was hoping it did it did it did it did it did it. Microwave to perfection included both weedy and bun sans condiments. <laughs> was it served served in a bowl for the the soup of the day? Chef Campbell's <laughs> Chef Campbell's soup of the day. Whichever can is on top of the stack. They just buy a stack of soup. It's awful. Awful. Might be it's, the best. It's, uh, well, I think it's it's great uh, comedy, and I think people appreciate it because they, they know what they're trying to do. Everybody knows what's going on, yeah. and they're just making fun of it, right. and that's going to endear people. Right. Yeah, so the other thing is, like, everyone knows, and it really only, like, hurts little little businesses. You know, we've got a tiny business in a tiny little town. That's that's what hurts. If you're outside that donut of four sixty five, it hurts you mostly, you know. And and you say capitalism making beer cheaper than bottled water. That's because people are willing to pay stupid amount of money for water that uh, they are already paying for coming out of their tap of their house. Oh, that's the other thing I want to talk about. That now that water's got radium in it, man. Oh, the radium. I, I, could, I, I could remember. There's like one more topic I was could remember. Like I wanted to talk about it. That's it. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that was the one you approached me for because I think of the. <laughs> well, they just show you how much radium's in the water, right? And it's like, oh, there's radium in the water. It was like one of this looks on the black light. I see nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> well, there's a lot to say about that. But if you want to finish up on the beer thing, we can get into it. But the the whole thing with Indiana and and even all the blue laws and all the all the states is because. People think that Sunday is a special day, right? So it's God's day. It's all religious based because we had a lot of religious people coming over here to start the country. So that's just kind of the way it goes. So they've got a rule here in Indiana where you can't sign a contract on Sunday, which means you can't buy a car right. because most people can't just go in and pay cash for a car. And even if you do, you still have to sign the contract stating that the deed is being transferred over to your name, right? So that that requires contract signing, so no no car sales on Sunday. So everybody wanting to buy a car has to do it on Saturday or they have to take off work and do it during the week. Correct. Yep. Yep. Can't buy a car. It's, it's, all, it's all silly. So all of this, you can tell, all of it's all because of special interests. They're all going after Ricker because he's the one that pushed it because these guys didn't want to do this, but mm-hmm. they, the, the public is so yelling for it that now they know they have to do it in order to keep their jobs. Correct. Right. Their, phony, their phony baloney jobs is, is one... Uh, uh, great comedy movie has stated right so the so they go do this mm-hmm. but they're going to try and screw over the person who did it who pushed the issue in order to get their little final revenge out on him yeah oh yeah yeah and that's the other thing like abdul was talking about this they said like these sky me uh, the, the schemey uh, liquor lobby will try to, will give out Sunday sales to hold on to cold beer because they know that's what people want. They want the cold beer, but so but they will let go of Sunday sales, but they will hold on to cold beer. You know, me personally, if I was a uh, uh, if I was a liquor store, if if I was a grocery store, I would ask like excise, like you know, find out what is the exact temperature where they call refrigeration. Where does refrigeration start, right? And just be two degrees above that. At all times. Well, and, and the whole thing, I, I don't even see the big deal. If I go buy beer, I'm buying it by the case. I'm bringing it home and put it in my refrigerator. I don't really buy cold beer out on the road driving around, right? So, yeah, who it, does that? to me, it, who who does it? Who really, you know, there there are people who go in and just want a beer right then, and they want a cold one, so they'll, they'll do that. That's fine, but that's I don't think the majority of people really care too much about it. Well, um, Ronald, do you know when Indiana stopped allowing you to have an open container of booze in the car? Uh, it was uh, sometime after I started driving. <laughs> you want you to give us the date on that? We used to have a can of cold beer 
um, open drinking while you're driving. It used to be a thing you can do in Indiana back in the uh, 70s yeah. and I think early 80s. I think it was in the mid 80s or sometime in the late 80s when that started. It used to be 18 too and you could buy the beer as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, 18. it wasn't in, it wasn't 21 until the mid 80s when it was funny cuz I I moved to Chicago to go to the college and they mm-hmm. raised the they raised the uh, age to um to 19. So I couldn't drink. But then Wisconsin was still 18. Uh, but then they had a grandfathered thing where you know they raised the price, they raised it to nineteen. Mm-hmm. But if you were born by by July first, uh, you were able to still get in under the the grandfathered clause. But I was born twelve days after July first, right? So I was born on the twelfth. Therefore, I didn't fit in, fill into that. So somebody who was two weeks older than me was able to buy beer. I couldn't. It was really weird. It's crazy. Well, that's also like uh, what is it here in Indiana that. You see, if you're born after 85, you don't need the training class for hunting to get a hunting permit here in Indiana now. If you're born in 85, like I am, right? If you're born the year after it, you need a training class to hunt in Indiana. If you perform for that, apparently I was just born with hunting training. I don't need training. I could, I just could get well, my permit know. and go hunt. It's awesome. Back in back in the old days, we had to hunt for our food. We didn't couldn't just go to the grocery store and buy it, right? So we we had that knowledge. Heck yeah! Well, I, I remember hunting hot pockets in the nineties. Okay, but um, that's a dangerous animal to hunt. Let me tell you, it sure is. You know, got to give out his call, mom, mama. That usually what summons the hot pockets. It's <laughs> hot pockets. <laughs> but yeah, so here in Indiana, you could drive around in your car with an open container from the booze that the 18-year-old just bought for you and jump in your car, but you could not buy it on Sunday and call from a grocery store. Yep. I always find that nuts. It's it crazy. Was, it was the weirdest thing. You couldn't, you had to, you had to, we always had to drive to Terre Haute to get beer on Sundays. I, I was um, dating someone who was, who, who was going to ISU. And we would just drive. We'd go to Terre Haute, mm-hmm. and you just drive across the state line to the the gas stations that all had a bunch of alcohol. And they knew what they were doing. They were selling it to all the college kids. Yep, yep. Now the whole alcohol liquor, uh, the uh, um, the alcohol limit. That is a story. We'll hear in the chat. They asked for it, talking about it. That is a story for a different day. I am upset about that. Point oh eight is incredibly too low. That is. Yep. It's way too low. No, I remember it used to be it used to be like one point two, then they dropped it to one. Now they're like, we need a point eight, and now they're trying to drop it down lower. And it's right. like, really, guys? Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. It should be. It should be. Are you impaired to drive? Some people are impaired at point six. Some people are not impaired at point one five. Correct. This is the way bodies are different, so they can't do mm-hmm. that. They have to go to the lowest common denominator, which is the way government works. Everything's the lowest common denominator, so they have to go down to that point. And it's just a it's just a way for them to basically say it's like if you don't want the beer to be alcohol, just make the law that there can't be alcohol. No. Which begs the question: Why did we need a constitutional amendment to outlaw the sale of alcohol, but we don't need a constitutional amendment to outlaw the sale of other things? Seems a little odd to me, but well, hey, maybe I maybe I don't know what's going on. It's just well, it's okay if you if you want to go after the Mexican in the blacks, it's okay. You don't need an amendment for that. But whites, you're gonna need an amendment. So it was oh, and and well, there's a lot of caveats too. But I mean, if you want to just take five seconds, but okay, okay, it, it was never it never it, it's not illegal in the United States to smoke marijuana. The, constant, the the Supreme Court has already stated that if you're an, a person who is addicted or a person who does not, just the act of smoking it, mm-hmm. you cannot go to jail for it. You go to jail for possession of of marijuana or the selling of marijuana. It's like it was in, the, in, in Prohibition. It was never illegal to drink it. It was always illegal to have it or sell it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That's also like a lot of people get busted. Like they really get busted for marijuana when they do something when they try to get rid of it at the time, toss it, throw, try to swallow it. Yeah. They get busted for what tempering of evidence. Yep, because you you possessed it and now you're trying to get rid of the fact that you possessed it. So that's a breaking of the law. Yep, that's another law that just keeps stacking on you until they take you out. All right, all right. Anything else on alcohol? We'll get on that point oh thing and the BAC stuff later on. Well, time. I. I just, I just say that I think everybody knows this is all s- stupid, and other states have have moved past it. Indiana is one of the few states that, even though it's listed as one of the most liberty friendly states in the country, we still have these weird, 
uh, silly laws that are holdovers and only still in existence for special interests. Mm -hmm. We're going to eventually have to get rid of these. Why people can't just take the bullet and you, and accept the fact that it's going to be that way and do it is weird to me. Why they fight so hard for it? Mm -hmm. But it it's like they think, well, eventually everything will turn back and it'll be okay if we just hold out long enough. I think is what they're they're thinking. But they don't understand that they're putting themselves into a very hypocritical position oh, on yeah. a lot of issues when they do this. Oh yeah. So, but it's just the way they do that's their special interest that's what they have to fight for in order to keep getting reelected mm -hmm. we have to we have to just start targeting and focusing on those people who are the holdouts mm -hmm. and either tell them that you're not going to get voted for if they don't change or vote them out right yeah that's the only thing and change it yeah which is well, which will suck because you're trying to turn you'll basically make the election like a one uh, one issue right one yeah. thing yeah. And, which, and that's horrible we shouldn't have to be that way yeah it, it's it's like gambling. I mean, how how hard was it to get gambling in Indiana? Oh, yeah, that was ridiculous. And yeah. I still I still can't play poker online. We we used to, I used to play poker online. I was a semi pro player. I used to make money doing it. Mm -hmm. But now I can't because when Obama had Black Friday, it, it stopped everything because he, in my opinion, I don't know where he got the power to take over someone's DNS servers that exist outside the country. Right. That seems a little odd to me that he thinks he has that power, but he did it. They took over those those other countries' DNS servers mm -hmm. and hijacked them, which I thought was really strange. But now it's it's legal, and they do it, they're doing it through bank transfers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's so frustrating because it's it's like I'm not hurting anybody. I'm sitting in my 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 house, yeah. affecting nobody but me. I'm making a little bit of side money, having fun doing something I'm good at. Mm -hmm. I don't see the problem here. I don't. I shouldn't have to move to Vegas. In order to play uh, poker, it seems silly to me. But, but you can play on the lottery. You can you can spend you can go in and spend your weekly uh, paycheck or mm -hmm. allowance that you get from the government, or whatever, and and buy lottery tickets because oh that's a good thing apparently. I, I just don't. See, it's it's all so annoyingly backwards. I think Reinhold triggered himself on that one. I did. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a, I, I, I could be making extra money. It really frustrates me when they start hitting my livelihood at a time like that. All right, Sitsi, um, I also want to thank for the follow for Reich WS and Reich WA. Thanks for the follow of the channel. Um, that happened to the, the Reinhold triggering. Um, let's see, the... Sorry. That's okay. I, if you want to go back, we can come back and talk to... Uh, we can do one day if we, uh, we talk um, gambling because I, I, I get upset too, especially when Coinbase helps out the um, federal government for it because yes. if they find out if your uh, Bitcoin account or anything like they can trace you down to you know this has been used for gambling boom you get you know you get blocked from uh, coinbase but wait it well wait a second I thought cryptocurrency the biggest thing about cryptocurrency was the anonymity of it how can they trace you the, the <laughs> no we're not doing this now come on <laughs> <laughs> it's it's anonymous until you make your presence known, <laughs> and it's more of a you. Ah, it's just they don't know who you are, but they know you <laughs> used this for this, and you went here. But if you use your name there, they instantly know who you are now. But the main thing is, mm -hmm. b because it's not. Um, that's why the. I don't. Uh, don't don't do that. Don't double follow. Don't make sock accounts and follow the account. Don't do that. Um. Uh, lost my train of thought where I was going with that. Um, that's the other thing. There's like some of the other Bitcoin. cool, the other cool cryptocurrencies out there that actually are truly anonymous. They built, they built an uh, anonymity into the code. They have these zero knowledge proofs, which is really, really beautiful. Uh, like, um, what is it? Uh, I'm gonna get these confused. Zcash um, and um, Monero. Uh, Oh crap! I can't remember. There are some. Anyways, but those are the ones I can think by the top of my head. They have zero knowledge proof in them, which is really, really cool. Moving on to our next topic, we're gonna move to a real American hero, Ch Chelsea Manning. Taxation is a sharing responsibility, and only wealthy believe that taxation is theft, and they don't pay taxes. We should make them pay. Other than the drastic use of emojis. What else do you hate about this whole sentiment other than, yeah, uh, because she's running for office now. 
Bradley's running for office, really? Uh, it's Chelsea here, okay? Her name's Chelsea. <clears throat> okay, all right, okay, all right. So you're going to do that? So here, hmm? I, I, I like Chelsea Manning for one reason, but that doesn't mean that they're right on everything. Exactly. You know yes, yes, yeah. It's just like... You can read H.P. Lovecraft. You can read Mark Twain and take... Uh, well, not Mark Twain. H.P. Lovecraft and take the racism out of his book and still enjoy his art. You can still look at Chelsea Manning and look at the video that she leaked and still hate every other thing that she has done. But, yeah. So, Chelsea Manning is files for the run for U.S. Senate bid in Maryland. If I lived in Maryland, she would not have my vote. She has my support because she did... Um, because she stopped the U.S. government... But since she's running as a dem and believes taxation well, is not theft, she does not have my support. She didn't stop the U.S. government. She highlighted to everybody else what the U.S. government was doing. They're still doing it. Oh yeah, they're still doing it. Probably did it yesterday, twice. That's that was the, that was the one thing I was thinking about bringing it up later if we have time. But yeah, there's uh, the whole vote for that going on. But for the the FISA thing. But uh, I. <laughs> The, the the frustrating thing here is I mean, so look she wants to run let her run I don't care let her run she and if if the people want what she's selling mm -hmm. that's the power of government a representative of government go for it but she's wrong yes yeah she won yeah so Chelsea Manning will run for the U.S. Senate in Maryland the transgendered former Army intelligence an analyst was convicted of leaking classified documents, filed uh, her statement of candidacy with the Federal Election Commission on Thursday. She is running as a Democrat and will likely challenge two-term Senator Democrat Ben Cardin. He has served two terms and is overwhelming, overwhelming favorite to win. The 30-year-old Manning listed at a North Bethesda address in her FEC filing. She is running as a Democrat. Manning was convicted of leaking classified information and spent more than six years behind bars, known as I'm not going to say the dead name uh, of the time of her 2010 arrest. Manning came out as a transgender after being sentenced because President Obama granted clemency to Manning before leaving office. Which And, and question, quick question, why did Chelsea Manning get clemency, but they're still going after Edward Snowden because at least Edward Snowden at least tried to, you know, bring his information up to whistleblowers, but she didn't. Um, let's see here. Um, I think Chelsea got it because one in the climate it was, it was hmm. also a good punt to look good at the end. Okay. I, and what's, uh, what's the real reason? Huh? There was a nice punt. Okay. Nice punt. Looked good. I put, Hey, I pardoned trans person. Boom. All right. There you go. Yep. That's like I said, it's a punt. It's a big punt. It was awesome. so Edward. Edward should just come out and yeah, you know, he'd be, he'd be back home again. Maybe that's Ross Ulbricht's next move. <laughs> Might be. That's the other thing is like, honestly, I would probably, if someone just ran out, if any, any candidate ran on the idea for president of partying uh, Ross Ulbricht, they've gotten my vote. I don't care if the biggest socialist in the world, I doubt they'll get anything at run, but if they pardon uh, Ross, they've got my freaking vote. I'm sorry. What's happened to Ross is it's awful, it's terrible, and I want him out. Um, but yeah, which is also like it's awful is that she believes in all this stuff and likes the, the big data government. But this was big data government that killed those people on the video that you released and held you captive. It's like it's almost like this is it's Stockholm syndrome <laughs> run amok. And where did she release her video? Um, to WikiLeaks. To WikiLeaks, but I thought WikiLeaks was a Russian front, <laughs> and she's a Democrat, right? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm having trouble here with, with <laughs> the, fitting all of these into the narratives that are going on. It yeah. seems odd to me. 2018's not talking to 2012. Is that too... <laughs> I might be a simple man. I don't know. It's just maybe it's, I'm missing something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, WikiLeaks, the Russian propaganda arm. <laughs> yeah, so she released it there, which... You know, she got caught up because OPSEC went poor somewhere and the whole thing. And that's why it was so important for, like, uh, what is that guy that ran Lava Bit? Anyways, the guy Oh, ran... no, yeah, I know who you're talking... Yeah, yeah, the... Okay, yeah. Uh, dot Kim dot com? No, it wasn't Kim dot com that did Lava Bit. That'd be, he'd be, that'd be too awesome for Kim dot com to also do Lava Bit, too. But, uh, what is this... Anyways... I'm sure someone looking it up and going like, "You guys are all wrong. It's this guy." But anyways, uh, uh, 
Edward Snowden used the alphabet email address, and it was the secure email address came out at the same time Gmail came out. Um, and what Ladar, ha- Le- Ladar Levinson is his name. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ladar Levinson. All right. So, and it was a pretty cool thing. It was like the, and it was there for, and it was encrypted on the server, so you can send private communication with it. And the FBI wanted that server. They wanted to track Edward Snowden through it, which he didn't know they wanted Edward Snowden. They just know he. They just said they wanted his your your, your private key. They want in the server. There's someone there they want. So he didn't know who he was protecting. He just know there's a needle in his haystack, and there coming with fire. So he did every little legal game to keep them at bay. So they asked for his private key, right? So they printed it out. He printed it out on a sheet of pa- on many sheets of paper and handed him the key. So they had to go back and then write the order again and say they want it digitally. And but but while he but while he's playing these shadow games like that, he took the time to take lava bit and take it down. That business that he did all those years starting it up, he destroyed and overnight. He just went there and just took started deleting all the servers and did everything. Yep. And Rick's jail time. He didn't know who he was saving, but he figured it out. It had to be Edward Snowden because that you know came out and told him like, yeah, I, you know, it wasn't for that. You know, they probably who else, you know, makes you wonder and then from that story there it lets you know like maybe Edward Snowden really wasn't working alone. Maybe he did have some more people that wanted to help but they wasn't ready to move. So you just don't know though. Yes, Ross, uh, he, uh, yeah, he got an obnoxious interest, uh, and, and if Edward Snowden got caught in the United States, he would also get a kangaroo court and have a, uh, uh, yeah, there's no current laws, Obama does pro- prosecute, prosecute right. tons of whistle, tons of whistleblowers, they, I hate this whole aspect when people say, Obama had eight years, you know, nothing bad happened, I'm like, you haven't been paying freaking attention. <laughs> No, they, well, they're not paying attention to the right things. They're just like he's great, and they don't. They don't even look. They don't even see the the problems. All right, so that's yeah. the issue there. And and what the crowning is talking about is for Ross. It's like you know, uh, being held accountable accountable for being an accomplice. Was that Ross you were talking about, or was that he was talking about, or was that the lava bit guy? I think it's like so. A, the re- the reason why Ross should not be held accountable is because there are protections in the law right now for uh, website providers, things like that that they are not responsible for things that happen on their that site if they unless they're um, managing it mm-hmm. if they're participating in the management of that so let's say Facebook you know somebody's using Facebook for a drug deal is is uh, the Facebook owner going to go to jail for that right you know that mm-hmm. that's that's the problem you can't you can't monitor every aspect of what's going on on those sites as as a provider of those sites so they have to have some protection against what's going what your site is being used for if you know about it and you allow it or tacitly allow it Mm -hmm. uh to go on that's one thing but if you are just providing us uh providing a service that people are then using for their own purposes it's like the 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 twitter people aren't responsible for the fact that isis was using twitter right to communicate back and forth right you know yeah how could they be responsible for that Countless drug deals have gone gone on on Facebook. Countless, countless. Okay, they've probably used you know code words and ciphers on it to trade like oh, you know, you know. Uh, hey, do you got they, the pizzas? You know, I have thirty seven hot they dogs. Yeah, pizza, pizza, indeed. Um, <clears throat> so, but they did. They don't. Um, they didn't go after the pager company for the pagers that people are using for drug deals, right? Or the texting. Mm-hmm services and Verizon and those people for that. I mean, it's right at some point yeah, you have to, you have to be able to prove that they were uh, knowledgeable or in on what was going on on that site. Right. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Cause like Ross's hands never touched drugs. He was demonized out in the media for the uh, murder for hire case, which never got, was never proven. <sighs> So so much crap. I think I think you know what one of these weeks. Well, look at all the murder stuff that's happened on Facebook with Facebook killers and things like that. But you're not responsible for that stuff. Yeah, correct, correct. You know, where where are they going after Zuckerberg for that stuff? Right, they're not because he's their their bitch, right? (laughs) (laughs) But it kind of. All right, I I think whoever does Chelsea's eyebrows should be fired. Okay. They're shaped awful. How, how, okay. Your body should <laughs> stop the body shaming. <laughs> just saying that 
she needs to. I do. I do love. Oh, I love Glenn Greenwald. Thank you for bringing him into this because he is, um, he is so perfect for for me because what he's done is he's kind of taken a path that I took. Where I was, I used to be a Democrat long, long, long time ago, <laughs> and I just saw the stupidity of the Democratic Party was going through, and I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't, I couldn't. Um, resolve it all around my, you know, I could say, okay, you know, there's some things here, some things there, right. But it got to, it got to the point where is this is the underlying democratic party. And this was back, um, in 92, I think it was when I just said, I'm done, I'm walking out. Cause I was working for, uh, uh trying to get a guy elected. And I was just like, this it's not, I can't, I don't believe in anything he's saying right now at all. And I realized that I just wasn't doing it. So what he's done is he used to be a darling of the left. Because he was going after Bush for all the stuff that Bush was doing wrong, mm-hmm. rightfully so, and hitting him hard. And everybody loved him. And same with WikiLeaks. Everybody loved, they all loved WikiLeaks on the left because they were going after Bush because when Bush was in office. Correct. So they're the darlings of the left. And then suddenly when the left gets into power mm-hmm. and these people start saying, hey, look, you're doing similar things and you're wrong and your your hypocrisy is so blatant that we're calling you out on it. Suddenly they're Russian apologists, yep. right? So they'll say the same thing about about Glenn Greenwald now that he's a Russian apologist because he doesn't buy into the Russian hacking and all that stuff. He's like, hey, wait a minute, there's some things here, there's some questions. You're not answering, you're not giving us the proof, you're not giving us the information we need to make this, to, for us to believe this, what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So why are you just buying into whatever the CIA says? You weren't doing that 10 years ago. Yep. And now they all hate him. Yep. So so he's on a he's on a rampage now where he's just pointing out all the hypocrisy that he's seeing and it's just so delicious because he's so good at it I know it's like mm, 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 so good keep going keep roasting him yep yep oh yeah it's and um the simple fact that you weren't always a libertarian that means you failed the, the purity test I'm about to kick you out of the discord not sure you're not, if you're not born a libertarian you're not a true libertarian if you came from yeah. somewhere other than sorry you know we can't allow you to be part of the party, apparently. Oh, snaps. We got Jackie Zombie that just gave us the follow. Thanks. Thanks, Jackie, for the follow. Um, yeah, if you're not, you know, you're not, that's not pure. You're not pure enough. We'll have to kick you out. You're not pure. Well, and plus, I didn't come from the right either, right? I oh, was, yeah. That's the, well, yeah, I, that's, no, I, I did vote. No, I didn't vote for Reagan the first time because I was a little too young, but the second time, I, I might have voted for Reagan. But in 92 and on, it was I've been libertarian voting ever since, so. Hmm. It's cool. Okay, okay. We may have to let you stay. We'll let you stay. All right. So, centrist de- Democrats, which is also cool. Like, I love this article here because, like, uh, yeah, Reinhold's been m- making me watch more of the Intercept. I've been trying to look at it more uh, often. The thanks to thanks to Reinhold, and it is really delicious, some, especially this article here because some, yeah. it was like I was looking up Chelsea Manning stuff, and the first place I saw anything really report on it that I really liked was the intercept because it's like centrist democrats go after you know uh uh, uh chelsea man because if they get either a she's got to play ball to she's so out there you know and she if she gets unleashed that no one can really touch her and to me i can also understand why she's running personally honest it will probably be the least scrutinized by the u.s government she'll ever have granted the press will be in her face all the time but she does probably have to worry about a government wiretap while she's doing it because she all her communications are probably tapped and she's probably surveilled 24 7 by the u.s government except right now when she filed to run as a candidate well they're still doing it because they finally came out and admitted or it was finally shown that they were spying on Trump during the election. <laughs> no, you don't hear it on CNN, mm-hmm. but it has been reported that it, they they did. Dude, you know, dude, dude, they did. They kinda, we kinda, well, to be fair, they did that. It, to be fair, they they spied on everybody. Okay, to be fair. Mm-hmm. All right. Over the weekend, Chelsea Manning announced her candidacy for the U.S. Senate by posting a video outlining the broad themes for her campaign. Manning, a whistleblower, served seven years in a U.S. military brig for exposing uh, systematic U.S. war crimes, was held under prison conditions so brutal the United Nations formally denounced them as inhumane. That is correct. She was held in mostly, um, was it like a solitary confinement? Uh, she wasn't allowed to transition. She wasn't allowed to get therapy for that the entire time. Uh, she wasn't allowed to have anything. Like she, one time she had a copy of was it Vogue magazine that um, uh, Jenner was in. 
Caitlyn was it? Ka- Caitlyn Jenner was in. Well, anyways, they also uh, they, they threw her in a hole again because she like someone smuggled in a magazine of Caitlyn Jenner, and they are like, nope, can't have that. Write her up again. Back in the hole. Back back in the hole. And in terrible conditions that she was being held under. <sighs> it was awful. Uh, whilst her whistleblowing made her into a uh, made her a hero around the world, Manning has now became an icon of the LGP. LGBT equality, transgender rights with an act of profound bravery that at least matches, if not surpasses, her whistleblowing. She announced her transition and demanded the dignity and treatment to which she was entitled while she was imprisoned in the middle of a sprawling U.S. military base in a brig at Fort Levensworth, Kansas. Okay? So, you know, which is, you know, which you would think the left would be all, the Democrats would be all about it because they were so disappointed in their other, um, transgender uh, icon Caitlyn so they're like oh, this is one of ours we finally have got one this is the one we're going to push up we're going to put it in everything but since her release from prison she's become a visible and outspoken advocate for the rights of trans people she has used her position as a guardian colonist to stake out a wide range of positions including drafting a proposed law to provide protection for whistleblowers she certainly has more political experience and activism than many other senate candidates previously supported by the D- democratic establishment al franklin uh, franken comes to mind as one example if elected manning would become the first transgender woman ever and the youngest woman ever to serve in the us Senate. So, you know, awesome, awesome things here. The whole whistleblower protection. Like, you know, she's terrible. She probably, like, won't agree with her if anything on any of her economic stuff. But if she can get uh, um, whistleblower protection, awesome, awesome. I'll support her on that thing there. We agree there. Cool. Manny's opponents in the Democratic Party primary is one of the most standard banal, typical, privileged, and mediocre politician in the U.S. Congress. Benjamin Cardin, a 74-year-old white straight male who was seeking his third six-year Senate term. Oh, wow. His third six-year Senate term. So that's... So in the other article, they're just like, well, it's his third term. What they don't tell you is his six-year Senate term, so... Yeah, people forget the Senate's six-year terms. Yeah, you know, you don't think of that. Like, oh, it's two years. He's going to serve three times. It's six years, man. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Six years. To, you know, thank you, Glenn. Thanks for bringing that back up. I Even I thought, I forgot about that for a second. <laughs> I was like, man. Anyways, Cardin's um, um, decades-long... Oh, man. Oh, man, look at that. Is that a real word? Decades-long? Anyways, decades-long career as a politician from the start has been st- uh, steeped in an un- unearned privilege. He first won elective office back in 1966, which his uncle Maurice Cardin gave up his seat in order to bequeath it to his nephew Benjamin. With this dynastic privilege at his base, he has spent the last 50 years climbing the political ladder in Maryland. Wow. Cardin has remarkably few achievements from being in Congress for so many years. One of his few distinctions is that he has become one of the Senate's most reliable and loyal supporter of the AIPAC agenda and the Israeli government, if not the single most loyal. In 2015, he joined the Lindsey Graham and kicking off the annual AIPAC conference causing neocon columnist Jennifer Rubin to gush about how identical they sounded. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> That's not good. It's not good. So yeah. He's a he's a he's a real supporter on the Democrat side. So Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's in trouble. I wonder if you know luckily we don't listen luckily District Seven doesn't have a Senate that got a uh, seat that was uh, sent over to somebody else. They just got it from someone. Bitter District Seven person. I've went. I lived under Julia Carson, and now I live under Andre Carson. Just bitter District Sevener. Sorry. I, I, I I've met Andre or uh, uh, Julia before she passed. So she, my uh, step my my wife's stepfather was a uh, a big person in that community. So mm-hmm. she was at his his uh, funeral. She is a very nice. Uh, I've met her in person too. Yeah, she was very. Of course, I was young, very young at the time. Uh, I've seen her at church, stuff like that. She was a very, very nice woman. She, uh, she, she's me. nice, but she's also um... <laughs> disagree <with her> politically. <clears throat> yeah, disagree with her politically, and I disagree with uh, Andre politically too. And yep. and he and I've met him. Well, personally. and he got it off the name. He's you know we all know that. Yes, I dis. Yeah, there's certain words that you can't say in the chat, like Bittner. I, uh, 
Yep, I blocked that one. That one's blocked. There's certain other <laughs> words too. Just trigger words. I love how when hmm? people think libertarianism means you can say and do anything you want. It's like hmm, not on somebody else's private property. Yes, my private property. Somebody else's private property. He can say what he wants to. Exactly. Do what he do what he wants. Exactly. Um, but Cardin's uh, crowning achievement came last year when he uh, oops kicked the thing sorry uh, crowning achievement came last year when he authored a bill that uh, would have made it a felony to support a boycott of Israel whoa now that's gonna come back and bite him in the butt a bill that was uh, hmm? how can you make uh, your opinion <laughs> or I, it, I, okay come on. oh man she's going to hang him on that alone <laughs> Well, I don't think there's any chance. To be honest with you, I don't think there's any chance she's going to out oust, oust him in the primaries. It's just not going to happen because primaries are very uh, kind of decided upon by the party, right? So the party Correct. wants him in there because he's been doing good things for them. You know, they accept the fact that he's not 100 percent on board with everything progressive wise, but you know, he's got some power, so they're not going to take a chance on having that switch out. Yeah, I think they may use her to either get him back in line. Or give her some goodies to support him and back down. Well, they ha you have to kind of grow yourself in and get support in a party eventually, and this is kind of one way to do that is to to show you're interested in running, do a good campaign, show that the campaign was good even though you lost, mm -hmm. and that's how you get support later when something else comes up that you might want to run for. Yeah, but she, she, this is a big swing. And I mean, may, this is may a, make this, a deal too. Yeah. They could, she could get in there and do this, and they could say, "We really want you to kind of step away from this. How about we support you for a uh, Congress seat next, you know, next term, mm -hmm. and then we'll get you in that way." And right. she'll go, "Okay," and then back off, and then just drop out of the race and give it all to him, and then mm -hmm. that's how she'll get her power out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, well, he's probably got one more six-year term. Do you want that Senate seat after that? And we'll let you do this. Yeah, and by doing this, she establishes herself as the next uh, probable candidate if he does decide that at eighty he's he's done. Yep, and that's of course what we like to think. We like to think there's all these things going on in there, but um, they're probably going to yeah, which would be awesome. Well, no, it's not that's, that's not to discount that there's there, there is a thing going on in the Democratic Party that people are are not talking a lot about that there are a lot of young people in the party who are tired of the old people screwing it up. Yep. So the young guys are trying to. You know the Bernie Bros and that sort of thing. They're trying to say, no, we need to change the party. We need to be more progressive. We need to be more of this, more of that. And they're trying to be, they're trying to push the old people to step aside so that mm -hmm. they can reinvigorate it and and make it something. Because obviously the current people are failing, right? So that's a fight that is going on in the Democratic Party. I just don't think that they're ready to win it in this case at this point. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the Justice Democrats are having way too much infighting right now. So. Oh, I love that. Oh yeah, it's 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 awesome. That's why I, I love infighting in every party except my own. Yes, <laughs> I would like it libertarian infighting if it was more beneficial. Constructive. Yeah, constructive and beneficial. Yeah. Not just I'm just going to tear you down and make you a terrible person. Why? I I just got I well, can't make arguing, myself better. better. I'm going to make you just look worse. In the arguing over the small things, it's just like this. That's really not something we should even be arguing about. Things like that. That that's what gets me. Is that it's, it's arguing about big stuff, not you know stupid little things. Stupid things like putting. Yeah. You know, anyway. Anyway. Moving on. Anyways. <laughs> Despite, not getting into that. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting into that either. I told Chris I wouldn't. Despite all this, or perhaps because of it, establishment Democrats wasted no time in mocking and denouncing Manning's bid to become the first ever trans woman in the Senate. Instead, quickly lining up in support behind the straight white male who has wielded power for decades to demean Manning. Many, uh, uh, many of these establishment Democrats invoked the primary tactic they now reflexively used against anyone they view as a political adversary. They depicted her as a tool of the Kremlin. Whose candidacy oh, is really just a disguise plot to engineered by Moscow. You, know, you called it, Reinhold. You called it. Did you read this article? Yeah. You called it. You called it. I did not read the article, but it's just what the it's what the Democrats do now. It's what their their fallback is. It's funny because you know, six years ago they were saying how great Russia was, and now it's they're the enemy because of the. There's a certain group that got in that are uh, Ukrainian and, and support that, and they're fighting against that. It's it's all silly. But they've taken over the power structure of the Democratic Party to the point now they can't even think straight 
about the whole relationship with Russia mm. and they're using it as a tool because they think it works. Right. And it can work occasionally, but when you start throwing it out every time somebody does something, people turn off to it and they're going to find that it's not going to work. It's not going to help them in 2018, even though they still think it's going to. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help them 2018 in that regard. They're going to go somewhere else for that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Leading the way in the spreading this obviously deranged but accept acceptable in DC conspiracy theory was Nuri Nuria Tandon, um, president of the largest Democratic Party think tank in Washington last time. Tandon spread a viral tweet that strongly implied without even pretending to have a shred of evidence that the Kremlin had engineered Manning's candidacy as punishment for Cardin's hard-line position on Russia. Oh, he's, he's the victim. <laughs> Senator Cardin author, uh, authored and released a 200-page masterpiece on Russian influence in Western elections. Suddenly, he has a primary from Kremlin stooge Assange WikiLeaks primary source Chelsea Manning. The Kremlin plays the extreme left to swing elections. Remember that. Wow. Wow. So I'm guessing the Russians, the Kremlin also got to Ababa because that's how she got out of, out right. Right. That's a. That's of course. A, yeah. I mean, that's why. That's why Obama didn't, you know, go after him so hard at the end of his term, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Because uh, he was also being once the once he knew the Kremlin was in power. Okay, with Trump, he had to play ball. Okay. Yep. That makes sense, right? Oh, when when they thought he was in power with Trump, yeah, they thought that was yeah. that. That's yeah, yeah, not proven, and they're not going to be able to prove it because it didn't happen, but. And, I, and I'm not a Trump fan at all, but that this is no proof, guys. I'm sorry. I know you want it to be, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> I'm getting quoted out here in the chat room. Uh, yeah, and there's other conspiracy theories about Manning going on in the Discord, which we want to talk about because it's too valid, and I don't like them. They make me feel uncomfortable. So, anyway, this one here. The conspiracy theory mocks itself. The idea that Vladimir Putin sat in the Kremlin s steaming over Cardin's report on Russia and thus developed a dastardly plot to rid himself over his daunting Maryland nemesis. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know how to get rid of Cardin. I'll have a trans woman who was convicted of a felony leaking run against him. It's too inane to merit any additional ridicule, but this is the climate in Washington. No conspiracy theory is too moronic, too, too demented, too self-evidently laughable to disqualify its advocates from being taken seriously. As long as it involves accusation that someone is a covered, uh, covert tool of the Kremlin, that's why the president of the leading democratic think tank feels free to spread this slanderous trash. It's a side note, um, Tandon's ongoing attempt to smear all of her critics and agents of foreign power is particularly I ironic given that the, the, the think tank she runs, the Center for American Progress, conceals the identity of many of its larger donors, but admits that one of its larger contributors is one of the world's most repressive regimes. If there are any entity worthy of the type of disloyalty innuendo that Tandon loves to spread, it's the one she runs. Oh no! Well, isn't the center of American progress? Isn't that a uh, big Soros fund funded place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Oh, yeah. anonymous. The Soros has never done anything bad ever. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, five hundred thousand to nine 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 anonymous embassy of the United Arabs Emirates. That sounds like a great place. Let's see. Um. So yeah. Okay, we got that there, but. Anyways, uh, why have so many establishment Democrats so quickly decided to back a white, straight male politician steeped in privilege while devoting themselves to opposing candidate who would make history by becoming the first trans woman ever elected to the U.S. Senate in the process of inspiring trans youth around the world and helping to erode the stigma that has made them so vulnerable to discrimination and violence? They've decided to do this presumably because they find Cardin's centrist ideology and politics more appealing than Manning's more radical politics and believe that this is tr tr uh, that this trumps what could have been the historic value of Manning's candidacy. Laying it on thick isn't he? They've apparently decided to prioritize their own centrist ideology over the important gender, sexual orientation and trans equality progress that Manning's victory would ensure. One can certainly make an argument that the license they granted uh themselves here to prioritize ideology and politics over identity. It's a reasonable one, but one wonders whether they intend to maintain a monopoly 
on this license or extend it to others. Mm. Ooh, there's been an update. Oh, oh, look at the that. The update's interesting. I've been reading that. Yeah, read the update. Have you been? You can't read ahead right hold it. No, nope, but it's on the screen. I read ahead in front of you. You must have been terrible in school, okay? All right. <laughs> reading ahead, doing the homework probably. Dems got me believing Putin is Boris from Rocky and Bullwinkle. That's Wicked Kender in the ch in the live chat. Yeah, yes, yes. Going against Moose and Squirrel. Establishment Democrats have spent all day attacking this article with one claim that it cites only one example of Democrat who depicted Manning's candidacy as a Kremlin plot. Cap President Neera Tandon, and therefore it's baseless to say that this is, that there's a smear campaign against Manning from centrist Democrats. It's worth making a few points about this claim. One, the idea that Tan is just some random person I picked off Twitter who views her irrelevant to the Dem Democratic poly Party politics when she's in fact the president of the largest, most influ influential Democratic Party think tank in Washington, which I, is why I cited her, is really quite laughable. The objection is completely uh, ancillary to the actual point of the article, which is the extreme, inconsistent, self-serving way the centrist Democrats use identity politics. They give themselves license to support old, straight white male, uh, men, sorry, force habit, at the expense of pioneering minority candidates when doing so advances the ideological agenda, whereas leftists who do so are vilified for doing the same thing. See the rhetoric from Hillary Clinton supporters and the 2016 Democratic Party primary about the misog uh, misogynistic m malignant motives of Bernie Sanders supporters for how that works. Yep, Bernie bros got distrashed on the fact that I cited only Tannen does not mean that she was the only one spreading this inane Kremlin conspiracy theory about Manning's candidacy. The claim was all over Twitter. It was retweeted a thousands of times. I obviously couldn't list all the instances in a single article, so I chose the most important one. But for those who need to see more, here are several, beginning with this former official from the Clinton campaign. Oh man, it get good. Zach, at Zach Patekis, Chelsea Manning could have leaked the info anywhere. She went into the arms of Russian intelligence, bent on supplanting liberal democracy worldwide with a right-wing authoritarianism. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Oh, man. And sh uh, she, an all unapologetic Russian asset, writing and unwriting. Oh, unwitting and unwitting, sorry. Don't belong in the Senate. Then we have this one uh, from U.S. media's favorite Russian-obsessed expert, Molly McHugh. A little too convenient that Chelsea Manning will primary Senator Cardin, one of the most active senators on foreign policy and leader in making policy legislation to respond to Russia, ag Russian aggression for MD Senate. Guess that's what damn Tea Party is going to look like. Snowden Party? Wow. Wow, they're just going to... They went after Snowden, too. I know there are a lot of people who still think of Manning as a whistleblower, but the agent of a foreign power coerced this individual, leveraging their emotional distress into breaking their oath to this country and disclosing classified secrets, period. Ouch. Dang, dang. And, 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 and they're saying that the Russian agent, of course, is WikiLeaks. Yeah, WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is Russian. They, they coerced Chelsea into doing this. If, uh... Julian Assange was a Russian agent. He wouldn't be stuck in some crappy consulate um, in Argentina. <laughs> yeah, uh, he wouldn't be. Yeah, he yeah he'd be somewhere on a beach, or maybe he, he does. Maybe he is. Maybe it's, he's got the the Kremlin's got us so wrapped around his finger that he somehow keeps his pale complexion, even though he's probably travels the world. Okay, <laughs> got us so fooled. Let's see, um, Josh Manning. Senator Cardin authored and released a 200-page masterpiece in Russian influence in Western elections. Suddenly he was a prime. he has a primary from Kremlin Stooge, Assange Week Leaks primary source, Chelsea Manning. The Kremlin plays the extreme left to swing elections. Remember that. Liz Wall, Chelsea Manning has for years been cel been a celebrated hero in Russian media. Putin would love to see her win a U.S. Senate seat. Wow, is that is that true? So Someone duck duck go that for us. <laughs> That's Jesse Manning, but a hero in well, Russian media for years. Well, no, you gotta understand. Russia is oh. always happy when the United States is pointed out as doing something wrong. I mean, that's just kind of what their media does, right? So, it's not that she's uh, helped. 
it, there's no evidence, of course, that she's paid for by Russia to do it or she's for Russia because she pointed out something that the United States was doing wrong against its own citizens, you know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you got to understand, Russia is being attacked by the United States for, for years now uh, financially in a horrible ways. And if any country was doing the United States, we would uh, explode, go to war with them on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most so, definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's not like there's not a reason for Russia to animosity towards the United States right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I could literally spend the rest of the evening posting examples from a large accounts that, within 24 hours of Manning's announcement for candidacy, tried to tie her and her campaign to the Kremlin. Even if it had just been the head of the Center for American Progress doing it, that would have justified this article. But clearly, it was far more widespread and coordinated than that. And just to underscore the point again, this issue is totally ancillary to the primary point of the article, which is how centrist Democrats exploit identity politics when it suits them, but then feel free to keep old, white, straight men in power at the expense of marginalized minority candidates such as Manning. Boom! Boom! Drops pen! So, you know. Glenn is the man. That's all I'm saying is that that should be your first read of the day is anything Glenn Greenwald has written. Just, just go see what, he, see what he's read. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's not just because we like what he's saying. It's because he's he's thorough. Mm-hmm. He's a good journalist, which you find so rare these days to actually find a good journalist. Or if they get a source that says, hey, this is what somebody said, he will go research it and make sure that it's accurate and not just write a book that is just somebody's rambling gossip, right? Right. Or, or just say, oh, yeah, we heard it from this the CIA agent that this is happening. The CIA agents paid the lie so you might want to check their facts before you post those maybe as a journalist with any integrity which just doesn't seem very many of them have these days exactly that's one oh there's that oh man I want to read up on the more that uh, CIA um, the uh, terrorism article not terrorism um, the leak the Chinese leaker uh, mole not mole not leaker the mole the Chinese mole that was getting those agents oh man that because I have to read this article again. I'm going to read it, look to more source, because it really does sound like how the CIA just didn't give two craps and just started to work on U.S. soil, even though they totally can. They can do all the different stuff. They can do what they want, clearly. So we just... Well, technically, the CIA is not allowed to do anything on U.S. soil, yeah. period. Yeah. Yeah, they can do what they want. Technically. They can do what they want. <laughs> But but since everything they do is secret, how are you gonna know and how are you gonna stop them and where's that real oversight coming? Because there's always oversighting this stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean that the article I posted the other day that we talked about in Discord uh, that Glenn Greenwald wrote about the hypocrisy of the left who are doing the resistance movement mm-hmm. against Trump, you know, authoritarian, but they're still fighting to give him the right to do unwarranted searches. You know, it's like if you think he's authoritarian and you don't want him to have that power, then why are you voting to give him that power? Either you, A, don't think he is and you're just doing this for political reasons, or B, you want to make sure that any, that you, well, you don't care about the rights of the United States of citizens and you want the person next in power to still have that power. Right. Yep. So either way, you're wrong. <laughs> All right. So, any uh, final thoughts on the whole Manning thing? Um, I, like I said, I think that uh, her running is great. Uh, I wouldn't vote for her, but uh, more power to her to do what she wants to do. Um, but this whole thing about her, you know, the way they're attacking her, I'm telling you, this is a power struggle in the, in the Democratic Party that is going to tear it pretty hard. It's not going to destroy the Democratic Party, unfortunately. I mean, we'd all love to see that. It's like we'd all love to see that happen in the Russia, in the, in the, in the Republican Party. It's not going to happen. They're going to, they're going to keep going, but it's just going to make them seem, seen as even worse than they are now. And they're going to keep losing membership, just like they've been doing for the past 20 years. The Democrats and Republicans have both been losing membership for the past 20 years. Mm-hmm. And everybody talks about how low of approval rating that Trump has. Congress has a worse approval rating. The a media has a worse approval rating. Four city zip so codes where- it's everybody's just getting tired of the bullshit. So this is all gonna all gonna be part of what's coming up in the next uh, election cycle. It's gonna be interesting to watch. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I know that you love science, 
Especially hard hitting science, right home. I know you love it. Mm, love it. Let me some science. Love the science. All right, you ready? Ready for, ready for my science? Cause I, it's let me get, let me get it. Let me go. Let me go get a drink of water first. Okay. All right. All right. Go get, <laughs> go get your water. I'm just go to the tap. You go get tap water. Can get my tap water. Good well, time. luckily I have a well, so it's a little different. Oh, that's even worse, man. They got wells on here too. Private. It's a private-owned well. That means the city doesn't check it, so they don't even know what's in it. No, but but look, but look right there. You see where Indiana's sticking out in the middle of that map? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> circle <laughs> right here. Yep. I'm not in that big circle in the middle, by the way. Oh crap! Oh crap! I think. Would you think you're outside of that circle? Anyways, think for, you're outside. <laughs> make this circle bigger. I don't know, man. This whole maybe this ex- hopefully this radioactive like water makes like, makes sense for mass holes. Anyways, from the great website of I F and Love Science, 170 million Americans are drinking radioactive water. Fear, fear. I gotta keep remembering my cams up here. I'm so used to being down here, looking up at me. I forget it's here. Um, I still. Uh, Chris got meddled in my affairs, so I finally asked for a piece of equipment and asked for the 1080p HD camera. I never wanted it, but he put his finger into my project and demanded things, and I was like, "All right, I'm demanding equipment." Finally, it's gotta be. He's gotta be at the standards of where our libertarians now. Come on. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. You know, once that stuff like that, but he's not used to me asking for equipment. It's usually the other way around. I used to give him stuff, unlike certain other we are libertarian product episodes. Look at you, Boss Hog. Anyways. What? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> An alarming new... Inf- I'm not going to read this crappy article. This is junk. Uh, I've read it. It's junk. Uh, because it's from uh, F and Love Science, it's freaking junk, and it's just well, fear and click there's, dirty. There's... Even there's- wait, wait, wait. So, what they're saying is factually true. But they're not giving you the whole story. All right, let's go to the roots for that. Newsweek. Newsweek tells us the truth, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I've got all the best, best sources for this for this this issue. You know, freaking. You know. Well, right. go, what you what you always want to do is look at the author and go look and see how many degrees they have, and you find none. So it's like, oh. How dare you? You don't need it. You don't need a degree to do science on YouTube. Okay, all right. I just want nothing but the best academics. YouTube academics, like Bill Nye, science guy, and all his uh, doctorate degrees. Oh, wait a minute. First off, the only doctor I trust on YouTube is. Uh, uh, a Reuters investigation has found at least four city zip codes where 40% of children tested from 2006 to 2014 had high lead levels. Ooh. The rate of high lead tests in these areas was eight times greater than what was found among children in Flint, Michigan during the city's water crisis. Federal support has helped families in cities like Buffalo by moving them into new apartments funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. However, President Donald Trump wants deep federal budget cuts, which would take billions from programs used by local governments to protect children from the lifelong health impacts of lead exposure. Uh, just, so you know the point, the whole point of that, <laughs> art, of that video, right? Is at the end there, right? It's mm-hmm. an attack on Trump. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point mm-hmm. of it. I know, right? This whole thing. It's all Trump's fault. Yep. It's all Trump's fault. Mm-hmm. 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 No, so it's here's, all, here's. It's all his fault. Look, putting... So radium is a naturally occurring element what? in uh, in the world. So yeah, it's going to be everywhere because it's naturally occurring. But it's yeah, not... unless you go out and effectively get rid of it out of every atom of soil in the world, it's going to form another. It always has. But I'm... and that's the way it is. But I'm scared. It's. They've got stuff in my water. It's, 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 I mean, you know, when I, when I was growing up, so so they used to use radium because it was luminescent. So they used to have these toys and things like that that would that would glow, and uh-huh. they would use the radium from it to do that. It was a very small, minute amount. And as kids, we played with it, and we're all still alive. And cancer rates have been dropping the last twenty years. And what's funny is you go to I did because it was posted there. I did some quick research and said, I look up cancer rates, right? Mm-hmm. The first thing you see is cancer rates have been falling in the last twenty years, 
and then the UN coming out and saying cancer rates are going to rise the next 20 years based off of what? The next, you know, the it's like for donations. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. So um, also that not only have the cancer rates been dropping, but also the survivability from cancer have been dropping. And this is an area near and dear to my heart since my wife has been battling cancer for the last five years. So um, that's I know a little bit about what's going on with the whole cancer thing anyway. So uh, there, California has been on a tirade of trying to label everything that they have that's got anything in it that's uh, been linked to causing cancer has to be labeled on the product. Mm -hmm. And they're putting trying to put limits that are lower and lower and lower than what the EPA puts out. So all these, all these, all the radium levels are at the levels that are okay. The EPA says are okay, but other organizations are trying to say, no, you need a lot less than that in order to do it. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what level of radium is going to cause cancer right mm -hmm. now? If you sit there and you drink a bottle of, of just pure radium, you're, you're probably not going to come out too well from that. Right. But trace amounts mm -hmm. have always been there from the day we rose up out of the oceans there's been radium on the planet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we and invariably every human being has drunk radium in some form or another at some point in their life yep yep and i think we survived as a species yep. fairly well yep. well just part about being the human on earth you get radiated for radium it's everywhere every oh. second of every day Yep. Yep. So, and you also dating yourself when you said you grew up and played with radium and toys. That's um, wow. Yeah, it was back in the seventies. No, no, no. Well, that's okay. That's okay. We, we we keep you because you're a Gen Xer. You're probably so close. Well, it used to be made. Fluorescent lights used to be partially, you know, partially from radium. How many houses still have asbestos in them? We know asbestos causes cancer. So there's a, that's a real scare because that is a direct known link right not just oh radium uh in a pure form is uh, radioisotopes are radioactive so yeah they're going to cause some damage mm -hmm. at some point in some level in your body but most people have so so when cell division happens this is the way cancer works cell division happens there's copies of the dna code that, hit, that are in each strand right okay. Um, so there's usually double and then there's always errors from time to time um, that happen and because there's doubles of everything it can usually fix itself there's also a protein that will help repair those when they do have an error during division sometimes that doesn't work that's when cancer comes into play radiation can cause more of those to happen mm -hmm. therefore there is a better chance that those errors won't get fixed properly and that's when it's possible that instead of dying off, mm -hmm. those cells could become cancerous. Mm. Uh, my wife actually has a genetic uh, missing marker that doesn't create that protein. It's called Lynch syndrome. That doesn't uh, it doesn't have the the protein created, so she can't repair those when they happen. So she's more susceptible to all kinds of cancers because of that. So that's how this all works, right? So it's not that the radium is causing cancer, it's that the radium can irradiate uh, because of the of the, of the um, radiation aspect of it. Any radiation can cause a disruption in that process of cell division, which can end up turning into cancer because of it. But it happens all the time for every type of radiation. There's not a direct link to say radium anywhere in your body is going to cause the cancer to happen like we have with some other pro other things we know that can actually cause it because of certain interactions mm -hmm. so it's a scare I mean they're, they're trying to because Flint has an issue mm -hmm. right Flint has a serious issue that they need to deal with mm -hmm. but they're using that to scare people into we need to give more money to the government and Trump's screwing us over right we need more money. The government's not giving us because it, but because of Trump. Give us more money, or demonize Trump so we can get more money. You know, and it's going into ta ta It's going into places where people don't have the best. They don't have the best resources to, or the even like the knowledge of like this is what they're doing. This is what they're really doing. They, 
and it's you know because if you look at it like that yeah that radium average on here and they're like well it's got these things here and it's you know and then when you really come down to the uh, radium levels where was it at I think I let's see chloroform dibrolium chlormethane radiological contaminants Radium. This utility detected radium combined um, 226 and 228. Radium 226. Radium 228. Uranium. Ooh. The radium contains the leach in the water with certain minerals for mining. Aha! It's mining and fracking. Well, hey. It's fracking. Well, what you what you don't understand too is that radium actually comes from uranium. But but fracking. But fracking. That's it. It's the also, enemy. You also fracking. have fracking. Okay. All right, you don't want seeping into our drinking water. Um, so the question is: Is it getting into the water table, or is it getting introduced into the water purification plants that aren't getting uh, cleaned out well enough? So that's another thing we need to look at too. When you look up and see all those dots, most of those are around large cities, mm -hmm. correct? Wa and water being given out through a water system. I have a myself. I have a well. Mm -hmm. So. If I were to test mine for radium, what would my radium levels be compared to a city water? And are the cities doing a good enough job in getting the radium out of their water levels? So the EPA has these standards on what the levels are. Mm -hmm. So the water companies are most likely just doing what they need to do to get it under those levels and then stopping. Correct. Well, it's Indiana. Um, they do. We do terrible underground plumbing. And we'll take the money from the gas tax and anything going for the ground and we'll spend it on other things above ground that look shiny. Uh, Wick Kender said, you get 15 living just above the ground on the East Coast. Ha, ha, living on Colorado Plateau is 75 MREMs a year. Evacuate. Oh, oh yeah, because you're so much higher up. So, yeah. Or um, we've got Wallace who um, is a, um, that flies on a plane all the time. You know? Or I wonder how um, um, Larry is and how much stuff he gets from just being on a boat going around the Ohio River all the time. I mean, and, and not to discount, but even one little speck of radium mm -hmm. could cause cancer just because it could happen to interfere with that one process. But the odds are so stacked that it's such a small, minute chance of happening that you, I mean, just living, you're going to have a chance of getting cancer just because you're alive, right? The largest, what the biggest cause of death in the world right now mm -hmm. is being alive right that's a hundred percent death rate oh man oh man i'll have to fix that i'm gonna fix that i'm not dying now and become the and no one's talking about that well all i have to do is so, to uh, rip open the heart of the tardis become myself a come become a fact you know hard piece of time i'll be fine don't worry about dying you can be bad wolf yep you can be bad wolf so so there there's the thing is is that and the problem with this is is that there is elements of truth to all this. This is a factual thing, that this mm -hmm. is possible. But it's being overblown for political reasons. And that's when you get into a really bad area when you start intermixing politics and science mm -hmm. is that most politicians don't understand the science enough, so they are easily themselves easily scared and take up causes that they don't understand. But, but the site says chlorite harms my thyroid. Mm -hmm. Chlorite forms in drinking water as a byproduct of disinfection. Chlorite impairs thyroid function, making thyroid exposure most harmful during pregnancy and childhood. Okay? And then apparently the state was supposed to be 55.6 parts per billion, and um, the national average is 112.9 112, 112, uh, parts per billion, which the... which. Indianapolis at is at 492.9 parts per billion. How is that good? Huh? 492 parts per billion? <laughs> I think that's what that says. Let me look that up. Make sure PPB is parts per billion. I think that's what that means. It is parts per billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it is. But I'm just saying, that's per billion. Yep. <laughs> Humans have a very hard time with large numbers and understanding the scale of large numbers, right? That's why the national debt, everybody shrugs it off because it's just like too big for them to understand the real issues. Because it is. 2020, it's too large. That number's too big. You can't, you can't yeah. 
it's 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 like you can't wrap your head around it so I, there's a there's a great guy on on youtube who used to and he doesn't do this anymore unfortunately but he used to do things with pennies to show scale and it's amazing to watch some of the scales of this stuff <laughs> that he done because did he do the he, debt in pennies yes All thousand right. pennies next wednesday the the bring that next wednesday bring that next wednesday right. <laughs> it was so good because it's <laughs> such a great visual of because he's talking about the Obama tax cut and he's mm -hmm. like, okay, here's all the money that we spend. Benny basically translated out into a bunch of pennies that he had, mm -hmm. and then he said, okay, now he's wanting to take a, several million dollars out of the out of the um, budget, and it sounds like because you're taking a large number from a larger number, it sounds pretty impressive. Yes. Then he laid it out in pennies and he says, okay, you take the top penny, and he had thousand pennies mm -hmm. listed out on this table, mm -hmm. and he and he also highlights. This is the this is the um, the mandatory spending that we can't touch if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Social Security and welfare and um, uh, Medicaid, Medicare things we can't touch. And then over here is how much our debt is, and we want to take money out of here. So he takes the penny, and mm -hmm. he takes a cutter, and he cuts the the penny into a, a quarter out of the penny and puts the penny back. So that's how much he's talking about taking out of the debt. Oh wow. Yeah, I definitely got to see that. That's, that sounds like an awesome video. Um, be, it's very well done. Yeah, be, yeah, because of the simple fact that uh, yeah, a, a, a trillion dollars. I remember having a conversation with somebody and like, and just simply asked them like, how many Lego pieces do you think there've been? You know, how many Legos? And if each Lego piece cost a dollar, we still couldn't pay off the debt with all the Lego pieces. We couldn't stack twenty trillion Lego pieces together. Yeah, that's the only reason I can get my head even wrap around the whole scale of that. But I just had to think of each one of those as an individual Lego piece. But yeah, anyways. But EWG, hey, you know what? They also sell tap. They also sell filters. I can get filters from them. Did you know that? You know that, Reinhold? Uh oh. Game over, man. We lost Reinhold. All right. Anyways, back to me. Apparently, Ryan Holt has has cut out. Hope he's doing okay. Hope he didn't get droned. All right. Yeah. So there's the map. You can go on this website here. You can look up your area. Look at look up the fear. Understand the science behind it. Do what you guys want with this thing. Um, that's that thing. Um, Ryan Holt, did you have anything you wanted to bring, or anyone in the chat want to bring something else while we wait for Ryan Holt to try to connect? All right. Um, uh, don't know what's going on with Rhino. Look like uh, he's gotten it out. Um, but we have been. How long have we been doing for? I think it's been. Uh, all right, we've been going for an hour and thirty-seven minutes. So that's hit our. Uh, that's my ninety-minute goal. There's still more I would like to talk about, but it's getting closer to ten o'clock. Getting closer to my daughter's bedtime, anyways. So. Nothing but the. the <laughs> what well, Illinois water is so bad, and that's why they're over there. They're the nasty people. The um, I th we talked a lot. Uh, uh, we libertarians did a lot of the uh, <laughs> the S word comments on wall yesterday. On yesterday's the episode, I think we took the first part to talk about those comments. Um, Yes, Paul, I'm going to do... Uh, I mean, uh, Eskija, I'm going to do a um, thing about the thing on Friday. But yeah, Illinois, comparatively, it's kind of a shithole. Look at it. Clean shithole. Uh, yeah, yeah, Crowning, if you want to turn your voice chat on, you can come and talk real quick. I don't care. You're in the Discord. If I didn't want you in there, I'd kick you out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. You're back? Oh, um, it was a silly thing. Okay, yeah, I'm back. I don't know what happened there, but I think I accidentally hit my mute button. Oh, okay. I think Crowning wanted to say something. Crowning, you want to say something? Come on, yeah, look. can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, as far as as far as the comments go, my uh, my whole thing is, can, can't we call shitholes shitholes? <laughs> 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 I mean, like, if you want to talk about Chicago, you're going to be like, oh, that's a shithole. It kind of is. I mean, everybody kind of 
But that's not very sensitive <laughs> to the people who live there. <laughs> Chicago. There's some great people Gary. who live in Chicago. They think it's a shithole. They know it. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing is that you get people, you're getting people who live in these places who are saying, hey, I live here. This is my home. You're calling my home a shithole. What right. is if Compared you, to. People in Africa want to leave Africa because well, Africa's we not that great. Well, yeah. well, most of them. If you look up on the Urban Dictionary, the the places they call a shithole in the Urban Dictionary is Lawrence, Kansas, and New, the whole state of New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> okay. In the Urban Dictionary, all right. Even BuzzFeed called New Jersey a shithole. All right. <laughs> you know. Wasn't there wasn't there an article about the person who was making the most um, political hay about this? had been on record of calling someplace a shithole and then Lindsey Graham yelling at him and him going, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Possibly. I, I mean, I it's, it. it's, it, it's just, like we should just okay. be able to call places that don't, that, that aren't that well, great. Think, we should be able to say they're what not you're getting great. into. Yeah. What you're getting into is that you could, you could probably say, Hey, those are, those are poor countries and those pro- countries we should, you know, that aren't as well off as we are. But when you start, people aren't, prepared or don't like straight talk right and that was the whole thing about why trump got elected was because a lot of people were just tired of everyone dancing around it and always being mealy mouthed about things and just said he just says if this place is a shithole he calls it a shithole and we all know what he means and it's good to go and we go forward and i think that's where he got a lot of support from so he's not going to stop doing it that's just the way it is but people are going to attack him on the left for it because they want to attack him on anything he says anytime he says it for any reason they can think of because right. that's their job right now, right? So to tear him down piece by piece, just like they did, a lot of Republicans did to Obama, where they would attack him on every little thing, even though he was right on some things. But that's just kind of what they do. And the left got all upset about the right doing it. Mm-hmm. But as soon as as soon as the power switches, they're doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's always been that way. Yep. And people, for some reason, are just, I don't know if they're just realizing it, or if it's a case of they're just younger and don't remember that this has always been the way it is because when their person was in power, you know, it was one thing Mm -hmm. and now their person's not in power and they're not used to what it's like. Right. Because it, because of that eight years. So a lot of people grew up under, you know, I I talked to people and they're like, yeah, I was like four when nine 11 happened. And I just, I just kind of can't wrap my head around it. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I've been, I, you know, it was, I, I'm 50, so I've seen all this stuff happen over and over and back and forth and back and forth. It's, mm-hmm. it's just always been this way. Um, yeah, I was, yeah, I was that's the key. That's that's the key you thing, though, is that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that's my, that's my biggest complaint, is that so many people these days don't know an existence in the United States where we weren't at war with somebody. Right. How, I can't, I can't grasp that that thought process of how must that be like to just this is your norm mm-hmm. that we have all this terrorism yeah, more of my life stuff. has been war than than not for sure so it's 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 sad that we're still in the state we still can't break ourselves free of it you know we shouldn't still be in this state of fear and and that's what it is and everybody talks about we have to defeat the the, the terrorist they've already won yep their goal was to make us scared, mm-hmm. and we are. Mm-hmm. And you've given in, you've given them the win because you let them scare you. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. But uh, uh, here that the was comment. a little tirade. Oh, you're fine. The comment section. Let's see. Um, yes, Jack is zombie. The Illinois is a shithole. Michigan's a shithole. Ohio's a shithole. And I'm most unfortunate, but according to this, uh, the uh, radiation map, Kentucky is also a shithole. We should all evacuate to Indiana. It's the only safe place to be. Um, Mexico, Streetville. Yeah, there's tons of places in Mexico. That's a, that's also shit views. But you could. But there's tons of just like the United States. Africa is so large by comparison. It has to have, let's say, one percent of every country, of every continent, is shithole. Africa, very large continent. That's a lot of shitholes. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Well, and here's the other thing. Here's the other thing nobody wanted to bring up in this whole conversation. Why are they shitholes? How much of that is because of what the United States have done mm-hmm. in leasing the world yep. to try and put our people in place and support the wrong people because we think that they're going to help us politically? How much of that is our fault directly? And no one wants to talk about it. Oh, Northwest Indiana has Chicago water. Water. Sorry, Laporte. 
take that, take it. But no, yeah, that's what we talked about last night on um, uh, We Are Libertarians last night was, uh, uh, especially with Haiti, the influence of uh, European um, influence, um, basically the French to deal with the devil, um, the United States to sta- um, just stabilizing um, Haiti for our own, you know, our own uses. Uh, and importing and, and this and, is what the Clintons did to them the last oh yeah, for, yeah. The, after the uh, earthquake I mean yep was, that was a horrible thing that we did and nobody wants to point the finger yeah. where it belongs correct yeah no one wants to talk about that and it's yeah and it yeah and the other thing we imported to a lot of these African countries is we imported socialism to, to them too hey guys have you heard this great guy named Che he loves oh, <laughs> he got some also some socialism yeah. communism for you too. So yeah, just like t- uh, so, they also have these bad, awful economic struggles. So, yeah. And, and before you go, I did post that ten thousand pennies thing in the Discord. If you want to take a quick look at it, it's like three minutes. Oh, I would like to, but it's after ten, and as much as I do, <laughs> I can keep going for hours on the subject. I would like to uh, go uh, no. tuck Gunther in tonight. Um, you know, it's it was really fun. I did. I really do like this. You know, you this, people and your families. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I never thought I would enjoy <laughs> being a dad, but I do. I thought I was. I thought I would hate it, honestly, but I, I enjoy it. So, all right. So, thank you everyone to joining on Low Key Wall. Um, the cr- crowning. Um, do you have any words before you want to get uh, since you only got in for a short minute? I'll give you anything you want to wrap up on. I just just the the one thing uh <laughs> it's it's the crowing it's it's just a a band thing the crowing it's a band okay. well it's a song uh from uh from Coheed and Cambria oh okay and I keep calling the crowning sorry sorry not that Coheed and Cambria everybody does it though oh good 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 thanks right home you got anything uh, nothing right now. Just uh, be good to each other and have fun. And we'll, you know, I'm sure Harry will be back next week and we can do this again. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I'll probably be back this Friday. Uh, Paul and I have been working on getting Liberty and Chill started back up. So we're going to do Liberty and Chill here. And in, uh, we've been doing, uh, we did Liberty and Chill before back. Um, Chris Spangle and Brett did it at Black Acre. We're bringing it back. It's for tri- at the Triton Brewery on uh it's on wheeler road i really should have had the trello card brought up for this whole sucker thing here let me bring it up da, 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 are you guys da. doing it you guys doing another wall tomorrow night um uh, yeah we're doing wall tomorrow night still um yeah there'll be thursday night wall with <laughs> uh with uh creighton harrington aka clayton uh uh Chris Galt, Chris Spangle, um, do go ahead and make sure you guys watch that episode because uh, Clayton won't be with a uh, well, Creighton won't be us forever. He is will eventually be moving out and going to New York to go and um, do and strike it rich for his new job. So hopefully, so make sure you guys turn into that episode. It, he will be missed when he finally goes. But anyways. We'll be at the Triton Brewing Company on Fort Benjamin Harrison at 5764 Wheeler Road, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46216. Um, um, website TritonBrewing.com will be there. I'm going to be there around 5 o'clock. They close at 10. Their, their dinner will be open. Come, have beer. Come chill with us. If you can't make it and you're out of state, you do other thing like that. Try to get a, uh, get. Into, um, we're gonna try to get up a network so so you guys can get in touch with other wheelchair listeners, and you guys can create your own Liberty and Chill. So if you wanna have Liberty and Chill Philadelphia, Liberty, Liberty and Chill um, Austin, Liberty and Chill um, San Francisco, right in the Bart system. If you want you can poop on things. I know she didn't say New Hampshire. Uh, the, I, uh, the 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 I, I doubt the libraries wanna get together for that. <laughs> I'm really mad. I've I've been trying to stay away from New Hampshire stuff because there's a lot of New Hampshire people that have pissed me off this last like month, and I've been trying to leave them alone. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, they got that event going on Friday. I w- am going to try to IRL stream uh, to Twitch on Friday. I've never done an IRL stream before. Always been here at the house with all the setup. So I've got I went out and uh, dug up and uh, because I'm not loading Windows on my Linux PC, so I went out and got Yield Dell with OBS on it. 
Um, well, and, there's a Linux OBS, isn't there? Yeah, but you've got to have the right. But if you don't have a, if you're having a driver, it, Windows like the ones to write video drivers for it, and video drivers in Linux for to me, I it's always since been a fail bill, so I don't even try half the time. That's why. Also, a quick question: Are we st are, is it still going to be gaming on Friday nights or in the Discord? Yes, we'll still game on Friday night. We gamed last okay. Friday. We played Ultimate Chicken Horse. So I really. Yeah, everybody out there, if you guys want to join the Discord, we uh, have a good time there discussing all 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch me uh, go on my little rants. Yep. They happen. Yep. We're the... Uh, uh, we are not. We are now not the largest. We just got surpassed yesterday by Free Talk Live's Discord. We're no longer the largest uh, libertarian no. Discord channel, we but we are far that. the more active one. We have, they have tons of we're people that best. are... Yeah, we're the best. We're more active. There's more stuff going on on ours. And then Free Talk Lives. They're most active during their sh when shows are going on. But we... So we're no longer the largest. <laughs> which I didn't know we were... I didn't know how close we... I didn't know we had the title of largest up until Free Talk Live surpassed us and announced it. I was like, holy hey, smokes. Now, now we have a uh, goal. Oh. Ooh, yes, yeah. Maybe I need to because we have the... to. We have to beat Free Talk Live. Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, when we when we get the uh, follower goal, when we get the our follower goal, twenty five, more, two more followers hit the follower goal. I think we'll go and do f and go for the um, ye old um, Discord goal and get our member get our membership up. So, yeah, please come out. Like, yeah, even it's Friday after I leave Triton, I'm gonna go home, sit at the house. Um, dr I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be that drunk. I'm probably going to have like one or two beers because I'm also, like it's a brew house, I'm going to have Gunther with me. So if you ever wanted to see Gunther, come on out to Triton on Friday. I'm bring, I have Gunther with me. Yeah, yeah, we're getting ready for the seventh day on seven days of die too. We need to get in there and take out some zombies for that. Oh, we do need a prayer for that. I think we need to plan that out. Uh, I think for next Friday we should probably plan to do seven days so we can get more people on it for the horde night. Make sure everyone's there. I would hate to do the horde with just like you or me. Well, we got our, we got guns now. We do got guns. I love I love my AK. Um, so yeah, that's a stream. Um, let's see. Paul says something. We're not done with Ar We're not done. Arc seven seven days to die is actually a lot more fun than I thought. Uh, oops, someone wanted to do arc. Um, I never wanted. Some, yeah, the crowing was asking him if we had because he his friend zone is the number one uh, server. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never done Ark. It looks okay, but yeah, you know, it's not my thing. I like Seven. I like I like snappy games. I do want to try. I think the next game that I do download, be, um, I think I am going to try out Dirty Bomb because Reinhold's actually very Dirty good at that Bomb. game, and I would love to play a game that he's actually excels in and actually good because Seven Days to Die. It's like why do we even give him a weapon? I don't even know. Yeah, I have. I built. I built our whole. He's great at building. I mean, he, beautiful. Gather resources. Build. Kill a zombie. No. Kill a zombie with an air bow and arrow. No, no, no. Give me, give me that gun that I've got now. I, the SMG I've got. We're good. I've killed more zombies with a stick. <laughs> I always get too close, and then they don't back off right. It's the timing thing. Got to practice. Get it down, gotta practice. I'm not gonna melee and it. it I'm not good at melee and dirty bomb either. Is why I stand back and shoot. Oh, okay. That's a great shooting. Game. That's just that's from that's from me. I got that from just years of playing S4 League, in which I wish S4 League was still big with Twitch. I'd I'd probably be number one S4 League player. I'd I'd I just I would destroy everyone on S4 League. Anyways, that's for that point. Getting rid of like I'm gonna go talk to my daughter. All right, thanks everybody for hanging out. Um, uh, so thank you very thank you very much. Also, all you guys' comments, everything you guys also post everywhere about this, thanking me uh, or talking about this show, makes me continue going. So everyone that comes on likes to say thank you. And if you ever want to jump on the Discord to jump in, just jump on in. I don't care. As uh, long as it's not abused, we'll keep going with it. All right, so bye, everybody.